Many years ago, up in the panhandle of North Idaho, round Kellogg, St. Mary's, Coeur d'Alene, there was a series of labor actions, uh, really an industrial war, a populist war. Well, the wages of the miners was reduced. Uh, uh, the operators said it was to help bring down the price of freight on freighting the ore out of the territory. And naturally, they just laid off a bunch of people so that they could bring the wages down. So they struck, and uh, the scabs were brought in uh, to work in the work in the mines, work in the mills. Well, you know, those class-conscious workers up there in the panhandle, they went from mine to mine, mill to mill, and they arrested the scabs, took them prisoners of war, locked them up in the union halls. They occupied the old Frisco mill, which hadn't been used for some time, and uh, blew it up. Then they occupied the Bunker Hill itself and threatened to blow it up. Now, the governor at that time, Frank Stunenberg, had been elected on a labor ticket, He betrayed those miners by sending in the militia. The bullpens were built. Many of those miners were beaten, clubbed, frozen to death in the bullpens. Somebody got a vendetta together, I suppose. Nobody really knows what happened, but... A fellow by the name of Harry Orchard uh, planted a bomb on Stunenberg's front gate. He went to open the gate, and it, uh, it blew him up and killed him. Well, it seemed like a pretty good opportunity to use that event to break up an emerging organization called the Western Federation of Miners. People who were completely not involved with it, down in Colorado, Bill Haywood, Big Bill Haywood, William D. Haywood, one of the founders of the Wobblies, Bill Moyer and and Pettibone, were kidnapped by armed deputies sent down from Boise here, taken all the way back up up to Idaho, and there was no extradition. They just kidnapped him, and there was a very famous trial. Well, of course, Bora, who went to the Senate, he uh, stood for the prosecution, and the defense attorney was the great Clarence Darrow. Clarence Darrow managed to, to get him off. As a, a very rare old song I don't think anybody's heard for a long time came out of that. Lane Stubblefield, the Idaho balladeer, used to sing it. Let's see if I still know it. Harry Orchard is in prison, the reason you all know. He killed Frank Stunenberg right here in Idaho. He set his bombs so carefully he did not hesitate. Blew poor Frank to kingdom come when he went to shut the gate. Oh, Harry has killed others, for them my heart it bleeds. He must pray for God's forgiveness for his terrible misdeeds. Harry blames the Wobblies, and maybe he speaks true, for no one on this earth can tell what such a band will do. Oh, the leaders, they was kidnapped, hijacked, don't you know? Bill Haywood and George Pettibone was brought to Idaho. Clarence Darrow stood to shield them, the result, it was so sure. Bill Haywood and George Pettibone, free men, walked out the door. So listen, all you young men, the real lesson, it is plain. Be prepared to pay the price when you set a bomb for gain. Harry Orchard finished his life out in the penitentiary, A beautific, white-haired little old man who kept the flower beds. A bunch of people got together some years ago to try to let him out because he was so quiet, peaceful, beautiful to look at. The warden of the prison who had been there almost as long as Orchard said, I've known this man as long as I've been warden, and I know if you set him loose, he'll go out and do the same damn fool thing all over again. 